Hey, hello! I'm back here on the uh, tool and cutter grinder and uh, I'm dialing in the 50 taper head so I can grind the 50 taper tooling for the brown and sharp milling machine. Um, I uh, I can't remember if I used the 50 taper on this head or not so uh, I'm doing kind of an inspection on it and you can probably see right here it's kind of pitted. It has some pitted and it's opposite of the shiny part. I'll show you the shiny part here. And uh, I believe I got it dialed in very good with um, this uh, deep hole um, stare indicator, which is just the right depth to uh, indicate oh, a 50 tamper. So I'm, gonna, I'm looking at it from this side and uh, hopefully you can see that uh, it uh, is really pretty true. But it's got a little bump somewhere in here that's causing um, a collar truck to uh, run out of true. Yeah, here's the shiny part here. You can see it there. And now I'm onto the, the pitted area. I don't think I have to uh, grind this. I'm going to, uh, I'll come around over that side. <clears throat> here I am over here. And uh, I'm gonna grab the camera. I just move this tripod out of the way and show you the setup here. Um, this is how I um, set that up to grind if I need to. And uh, I got the top of the table here um, angled on over, which uh, causes a straight surface for that indicator to uh, ride on. And I think it's pretty good. I'm going to get over here and uh, have a look. I'll, I'll take and uh, kick in the slow feed. It just seems to be pretty good. I think that's dialed down. So I'm going to take some of these tapers here and uh, put a little Prussian blue at... Uh, the, the blue that doesn't dry on there, then it'll show the high spots. And um, I just kind of went over it with this scraper here. It's an internal scraper or a bearing scraper, and I got it real sharp. And I just kind of went over and got the bumps that I could find or feel. Now I got to um, locate it, get the bad spot out of it, or if not, I'm just going to put the... Um, Hook up the internal spindle and, and just regrind that. And it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's within the capacity of, of the machine if you have an internal grinding spindle. Now, um, the factory internal spindle, I have a real early version of it and it doesn't work very well. It's packed in a box. But they come up, there's some later ones that were really substantial and they mount up here and they're driven from pulleys from uh, your regular wheel head. But uh, I have um, a grinder that I, uh, it has its own motor. It's actually a tool post grinder that I fabricated and built spindles for and stuff that I can use on here too. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's like a, one thing leads to another, you know. You get this, uh, I got this old uh, horizontal machi machine here really uh, set up very good. And I got, um, uh, got it set up so I can use a horizontal arbor. So um, now I can sharpen the, um, the cutters right on the arbor and uh, right in this uh, work head here and have them run through. Hopefully. So I'm going to get that working. And all I did was uh, I flipped the head over from um, the usual 
5C collets. Now I ground this adapter in place and that's how it runs so true. Okay. And, and this is the Brown and Sharp 12 taper. And this is an older uh, lathe um, adapter that I modified to fit in here. And it was in pretty better shape and I, and I just ground it enough to clean it up. You can still see some marks in it, but it you don't have to have 100% uh, contact, you know, 99.5, I guess is good, I don't know. But that's how that runs true. And what I had to do to make that work was come up with this gizmo and uh, to pull the, the 50 taper tooling in. So this slides in here like that, and there's a cap here that goes over the uh, 5C adapter and butts against the spindle itself, so I'm not uh, causing any stress on the 5C adapter, it just isolates it. Okay, so I will check further on that and uh, get back to you. I hope you're all doing good. We had a little break in the weather. I got to take the dogs out in the country yesterday. That was real nice. You know, it just kind of been uh, housebound. The weather has been pretty uh, foggy and cold. So uh, I hope it's good where you are and I hope you're all feeling well. And uh, I will be back with more stuff on this and a lot more on bearings too. I'm glad people are interested in uh, fitting bearings. I think it's a lot of fun. Okay, I'll be back and uh, now you guys stay busy. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm back here at 50 Taper Hole. And uh, I, if I, I hope you can kind of look up it from that angle. Now what I'm doing now, I test it with an indicator and it looks pretty good. But um, the, uh, I got this uh, Prussian blue and you don't want to scratch your nose for that stuff. It's a uh, non-drying blue. And I'm kind of, I kind of goop, I'm goop it on at first. Kind of goop it on all over. This thing's pretty heavy. So let me smear that thing around good. And we're going to fit this into the spindle or the socket of this work head. And uh, there's a little bit of corrosion uh, in the bore here. But I don't think I have to grind it. And it's best not to grind things unless you absolutely have to. Okay, so let's see how that's fitting. It's starting to feel quite a bit better. It actually kind of locked in there. But I'm going to rotate it a little bit. I already kind of did this once, but it was only contact in a very short amount at the front. And it can look, I don't know if you can see... It's catching at the front here. Oh. I'll put that there. Oh, it's heavy. And I've got really medieval looking tools here. This, um, this is a triangular scraper and uh, this is a spoon type scraper. And we're gonna take a look and just rotate a little bit. Yeah, I can see a spot here. You see some more spots on the opening here. I'm not seeing a whole lot back inside. It's all at the opening. So, I'm going to get around this side. And I'm going to take this scraper here. And it's almost like a ring of that uh, die right there. Clear around. So I'm just going to start pulling it. Well, I stuck a, um, a new battery in the camera. Maybe <laughs> I think that might have been the problem. Sometimes they don't uh, uh, 
charred very well. They say they're charred, so a little light comes on, but I don't know. So, I'm uh, just kind of uh, finding that the uh, problem with this is mostly at the opening here. I'm just kind of uh, putting that uh, die on there with the uh, shank of a tool holder. And that's looking pretty good. I don't know, you know, it's really hard to light this so you can see too. <laughs> Okay. I'm just going to wipe that out with my finger a little bit here. I'm going to put a little bit more uh, of this Prussian blue uh, on there. A little bit of this goes a long ways. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but the last price I saw for a Cincinnati uh, uh, workhead was $4,500, and that was like in the early 80s or late 70s. I was noticing the, in the manual I have there, a fellow gave me a copy of that, um, oh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, Sopco that makes these hubs for these things uh, offered rebuilt spindles and it was $1,800 for a rebuilt spindle for the uh, wheel head. But I've never seen any prices for rebuilding the, the work head. Now, I got that gooped on there pretty good. I was hoping it's starting to, it still doesn't feel like a good grab, but it's getting a, a lot better. See, it's holding in. And uh, you can look at the uh, the piece, too. See if we can get that. Uh, it's really quite heavy. You can see some uh, streaks uh, right in here, maybe, where it's... Uh, Pulling the die off this thing, off the shank. Then I can look here, and I got a good spot right here. I don't know if you can see that. So I'll just take the uh, scraper here and just work that off. Now, as you go, as the thing starts feeling, uh, like a better bearing, then you want the, the die thinner on your part. Yeah. Just grabbing a little too much up front. This uh, spindle steel and it's heat treated, but it's not exceptionally hard. Yeah, just like that. Sometimes it kind of cuts a little better if you pull it towards you. I'm just using the edge of this. You sharpen these just with a stone like that, because, you know, hollow ground. And sometimes the uh, triangular skip scraper works on on um, some spots. See, that's kind of working pretty good right there. Yeah, I like that. That's working good. Yeah, I can kind of feel the bump that's... Uh, Pulling that die 
on there. Let's get that. Uh, now, these used to be a standard deburring tool, but they're really dangerous if you poke yourself with them. <laughs> so you don't see these used for deburring deburr <laughs> the last 20 years anyway. Yeah, that's it. Now, the machine will grind this, but, you know, you really... It's best to <laughs> just do it this way if it'll straighten it out. Now, I'm going to stick some arbors in it, and we'll see if it's straight. And if I can't get it straight... See, I felt that bump right there. This is working pretty good at the opening here. Just kind of get that stuff off. Yeah. And I'll go back over it with that other one, the spoon type. And uh, then I'm going to take some of that hoppies and, uh, and the uh, copper or bronze brush that I think it was Ed sent me. And uh, I really appreciate that. I'm going to scrub this back in there, but that corrosion. And uh, I'll be back. I'll get this cleaned up a little better and try some arbors in it. Okay. Well, just a little bit of, I guess, heavy-duty deburring. And I got this, uh, I got the tool holders to run in, to run in within a tenth or two. So, I didn't have to grind that after all, and that's great. But I tell you what, you know, uh, getting a horizontal mill and some other machinery uh, <laughs> gone through a monkey wrench in the works. It's just sort of like, oh, now I got to sharpen the tools. Oh, I got to fix this. Oh, I got to fix that. But that's the way it goes. And I hope your endeavors are going good. Mine are cruising right along. So I'll be back with some more stuff. Okay, bye-bye.